How's it going everyone? Today uh, we're going over a couple little drills that I've found uh, personally really help me whenever I get a, kind of a little lower back or actually more of a uh, kind of a high hip, high glute tweak. Uh, kind of in our blog today we're talking about the difference between or kind of understanding when, it may, when that back pain that you have actually might be more linked to your hips, your glutes and your hamstrings rather than actually your back. Uh, we see a lot of people come in and doing a lot of twists, rolling around on the lacrosse balls and such and they can't quite get it to loosen up. I think that sometimes that's actually linked to more, that pain is actually linked to more glute tightness rather than the back. So we're gonna go over a couple drills that I use uh, to kind of help alleviate that when I'm feeling those problems. Hey guys, so the first drill we're gonna be going over is kind of a, uh, a hamstring isolation exercise uh, where you can use either one of the uh, symmetry bands that we have uh, wrapped around the foot or you can use one of the regular pull-up bands looped around a pull-up bar and then again going over the foot. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you how this works and kind of what areas it helps loosen up and strengthen. So like flat on the ground? Yeah. And then it should be a little bit tougher to let that leg pull back as far. Now that, now that the left leg is flat, it's going to lock the hips down a little more. There you go. You should feel that stretch a little bit more now. There you go. Hey guys, so the second drill we're going to go over today is going to be a drill that I call the windshield wipers. Um, kind of a help stretch out the hips, the hip joint, kind of a lot of the little muscles that are all tied together. They can kind of be kind of, they can be kind of hard to get to sometimes. So we're starting off just sitting up nice and tall, as tall as you can, nice and pretty. You're going to bring your feet in and then tilt your knees over. Again, this whole time while we're swiveling, you want to try and uh, keep it stay as upright as you can in that position. Uh, this first part, we're going to get into the starting position with the knees over to one side. And then we're doing kind of like a modified pigeon stretch. So this is going to help kind of stretch out the top of the glutes on the back, uh, kind of glute medius minimus, kind of the outside of the butt. So spend a couple seconds here, making sure we're breathing and we're actively pushing the knee down to the ground to help make sure the leg and everything is engaged. And then from here, to give that side a little bit of a break, we're going to hinge back, lean back, and now actively push our other knee down to the ground. This is going to help kind of stretch out the inside of the other leg, kind of inside front, kind of the exact opposite part that we were just stretching on the other leg. So spend a couple seconds in each of these positions and then we're going to come up, swivel the hips over, ideally trying to stay as tall as we can, it's going to help loosen up those hip joints a little better, and now going into that pigeon stretch on this side. So again, stretching out the sides of the glutes, kind of top of the butt, which can typically get real tight after a heavy hamstring or a uh, heavy glute workout with a lot of deadlifts, lunges, squats, things like that. After we spend some time here, we're going to lean back again. Again, trying to push this knee down to the ground to keep everything engaged and stretching to help, to help kind of find those tight spots inside the hip. And then normally what I say is to go back and forth, do about 10 on each side, keeping that active movement to help actively loosen up hips, but also holding those certain positions to help stretch out kind of very key areas that typically pull on the back and pull on the hips a lot uh, when they get overtrained or kind of overstressed, you know, during our CrossFit program. Okay, so the last goal we're going to talk about, so we spent a bit of time kind of going over how we stretch out, loosen up the hamstrings, the hip flexors, the glutes, uh, and how we attack the hips kind of one piece at a time to kind of find the area that needs the most attention in order to get the lower back slash the hips loosened up in case you have some pain happening. Uh, so now the next thing we're gonna do is give me kind of a drill that helps now kind of recenter and square up the hips after we spent all that time kind of dissecting and breaking it up into a bunch of pieces. So the drill we're gonna do is gonna be just an old school bridge. Uh, for demonstration purposes and kind of for a little bit better range of motion, I'm gonna use a medicine ball. Uh, it doesn't really matter what weight it is because all we're gonna be using it for is to put our upper back and our neck on there to get a little bit bigger range of motion for the hips. So you're laying down in front of the medicine ball. And all you're gonna do is get the feet as best you can underneath the, uh, the knees, and then we're gonna pick the hips up, keep the hands on the hips to make sure that we're able to feel the hips swivel and the abs stay tight. So we're gonna drop the hips down, press up, drive the heels through, trying to squeeze the butt as hard as you can. The main thing you wanna see here is that our feet and our knees are staying about 
saying about hip width. We don't want to see your knees flaring out or caving in. And most people will either do one or the other. It won't be a combination. If you're someone where your knees flare out and you're on the outside of your feet the entire time, you want to make sure that we're keeping the legs and the hips square. So you would grab a dodgeball and then from there, squeeze it between the knees. Not super aggressively. We're just using this as a contact cue to keep the legs together. So just squeeze the ball up. Going there, holding that for a second or two. Dropping back down. And then from here, pressing back up as good as you can. So again, the same range of motion applies. We're just using this as a contact cue to make sure that the knees are staying in and not bowing out. If you're someone that your knees are caving in while we're doing this, you do a band. Just like when we do our squats uh, and our glute warm-ups for, the, for uh, the classes, you put this around the knees, continue with your bridges, and this would help make sure that your knees are engaging outward properly. So remember, most likely you'll fit into one of those two camps. You probably won't need to use both of them because then your knees just be trying to fight against both directions. So go ahead and give that a try and let me know how that goes.